to that land so bright and fair. We will praise His name forever as we look upon His face. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing God's praise. And everybody will be happy over there. Everybody now, everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. didn't see the sun and I was like where is it at where's my sun but when I came into church this morning there it was and so just great to see everyone so I volunteered to do announcements and I've got a list <laughs> so bear with me uh first tomorrow we're gonna have a Memorial Day fish fry it's gonna be at four o'clock don't want fish we're gonna be doing some burgers too there is a sign up just so we'll kind of know how many is going to be coming. We also have a silent auction in the Breezeway. The men have uh, been raising some money, and that's going to be tomorrow. They'll be announcing the winners for that. Um, Thursday, Senior Soup Day at 11. We do need a little bit more soup. If you can, maybe see uh, Michelle this week and let her know. Then at 7 that night is prayer meeting here at the church. Um, we also, Saturday, have several things going on this Saturday. We're starting, uh, the ladies are starting a craft meeting. That's going to be at 1, and you can see Miss Tina for that. There's going to be a Wings Single Ministry at 5. <laughs> you can sign up for that. we got some interested in that. Um, we also... The ladies are taking donations for new and slightly used clothes. This is going to Alma's Closet. I think we do this every year. This is clothing that's going to missionaries' wives. And the last day for that donation is June the 2nd. And then we have camp meeting coming up. June 4th through the 7th. And the 6th and the 7th, the van will be going. There's a sign-up sheet if you'd like to ride on the van for that. Then we have Vacation Bible School coming up. That's June 24th through 27th, and there's a sign-up sheet for that. You know, Vacation Bible School is at night, but if you can't come every night, if you can't come stay the whole time, just come for a little bit. You know, if you want to volunteer for something, let us know. If not, come and pray. And in order to get ready for Vacation Bible School, um, we're going to do a little sock hop, and we're going to have this posted around. This is going to help us with Operation Christmas Child. And we're asking that you bring either one pair or a pack of socks for the month of June. That's one thing we're going to be collecting for June for our Operation Christmas Child. So, uh, if you'll bow with me, I go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to be here with us today, dear Lord. And you are here, dear Lord. You are here with us. And we just have to be receptive dear lord we have to open up our our minds and our hearts and just let you be there and come in dear lord and let us seek you we thank you for this opportunity and we thank you for today dear lord let it truly be a blessing that we need amen let's continue to worship him this morning living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away One day 
when heaven was filled with his praises one day when sin was as black as could be jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming back glorious day one day the grave could conceal him no longer one day the stone rolled away from the door then he arose over death he had conquered now is ascended my lord evermore when he let me love me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming back see it again when he let me love me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away oh rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming back glorious day one day the trumpet will sound for his coming one day the skies with his glory will shine a wonderful day my beloved one's bringing glorious savior this jesus is mine when he let me love me dying to save me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified
standing firm upon your truth Knowing you cannot be shaken Cause I've seen what you can do Keep on getting better. Oh, yeah. Keep, keep on, on getting better. You keep on getting better every single day. You keep on getting better. 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 You're so good. You Speak the name of 
about Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Over it. 
you know, the Lord is never busy, but sometimes we're busy. Sometimes we might be overwhelmed with something, but we're too busy to stop and think and release it into God's capable hands where there is peace within his presence. This week, I attended a kindergarten graduation, a high school graduation, and a wedding, all within a few days of one another. And a resounding theme amongst all those life stages was, keep God first, keep God first. And I'm here to tell you today, here in this moment where we are right now, that is the only way for true freedom, for peace, is to keep God first at the center of your life. That is the only way we'll make it. That is the only way we'll be successful. Nothing else matters. So that is good advice from five years old to where we are now. We're just going to continue our worship this morning with prayer requests. Please keep these names in mind as you pray. The family of Tina Lewis, Delois Young, Freddie Woods, Mary Lee Whitehead, Gary Messer, Sonny Daniels, Derek Vanier, Janice Richardson, the Ashley Stutson family, Lillian Bryan and Wanda Vanier. And I know we all have needs, so why don't we just lift our hands and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we are so grateful for your presence that we feel today. Thank you, God, for the freedom that we have in your presence, Lord. Thank you for the freedom that comes by entering into a covenant relationship with you. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us, that brings us comfort, that helps us, Lord, that helps us have freedom over sin over bondages, over things that would try to distract us from our true calling and our purpose in life, Lord. We thank you that you've made a way for us by Jesus Christ, Lord. And I pray today that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, Lord, that they would feel the Holy Spirit speaking to their heart today. And today would be the day of salvation for them. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness. Thank you for loving us even when we don't deserve it, Lord. You are so good to us, better than we deserve. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You will find he's not passing by this moment your need to in this place this morning more importantly than being in this place this edifice he's with me he lives in my heart how wonderful it is to know him this morning you know since we're in this attitude of worship and spirit of worship I think you're in the key of C they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength sing it they shall mount up they shall mount up with wings as eagles yeah they shall run oh they shall run they shall walk and not teach me lord teach me Time. 
they that wait upon the Lord. Can you give him praise in this house this morning? Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you in this place. Worthy is the Lamb. Go with me to the book of Acts, the 11th chapter, momentarily. Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11, verse 17 is going to be the text, but I want to pick up reading at verse 15 through verse 18. You may just remain seated as I read the Word of God. I know you've been up and down a lot this morning, but just remain seated. Follow along with me. Acts, the 11th chapter, beginning at verse 15. This is Peter speaking. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they became silent, and they glorified God, saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. This is the word of the Lord. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I ask that you would touch my lips to speak, open the ears to hear, give us revelation through the Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that you just lead us and direct us and that our worship would be pleasing unto you. I ask that any heart here today that needs a touch from you, God, that they're searching, they're seeking, I pray that they find in you all that they need and then some. Lord, I just pray that you minister to our lives and minister to us where we're at. I ask this in the lovely name of Jesus, I pray, and the church says, amen, amen, amen. I want us to look at this passage and specifically on the subject of how I fit from history to the present. How I fit from history to the present, or more importantly, just reconciling history to the present. I'm going to get right into this because I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this house this morning, and I don't want to say or do anything that would be contrary to what He wants. Because while there are many challenges in life, there's a challenge I want to draw your attention to. It's a, a challenge to interpret or to reconcile what God has done with what God is doing. And where does one fit in the process? Now, let me pause there for a moment. And as I begin this, I, I, I'm going to digress here just for a moment because I think sometimes, and I'll get to this later on, but our history is what we long for rather than living in the present of what God is doing. It's good to sing old songs. We've sang some old songs this morning. I, I like old songs. The older I get, I like old songs even more. You know why? Because I'm getting old. And, and those of you in here that are 80s heads and 90s heads and you were, uh, you, you were from that music, may I just submit to you today that 1990 was more than 30 years ago? What is today's marvel is yesterday's mundane, and so uh, time changes things. But sometimes we wonder where we fit in because we, we feel like we're being left behind. But, friend, I want you to understand, we serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forever. 
We serve an unfailing, unchanging God. But sometimes it's the point of discovering where do I fit in the process. We live in this place that we have the written Word of God, and it's glorious and it's life-giving. Can somebody say amen as, as well as it gives us a history as a basis for our theology and beliefs? Everything I believe is rooted and grounded in the Word of God, or it should be. Everything you believe is rooted and grounded in the Word of God, or it should be. It is, it's not just our map to live by. It's a life-giving Word today. We have the Word of God. It is our history and it tells us about God and in His nature. But to put it plainly, Scripture gives us insight to our Lord and His character that we know who He is and what He has done. See, because I know who He is and because I know what He has done, that's why sometimes I get excited even in moments like this when I get in the pulpit. I realize that the God who changed this world and formed it in creation and who made it as it is and who gave us uh, the ultimate sacrifice that we might be changed and we might be free is the same Lord that I'm serving now. I realize that the same one that touched the woman with the issue of blood is the same Lord that's still healing now. I recognize that the God who took the man of Gadara and though he was living in the tombs set him forth and put him in his right mind is the same one that can change the attic, that can free those bound by the depths of sin that can break every chain and break every fetter. We've talked about it. We've sang about it. Why not just praise him for who he is? Because it's not just what he's done. It's still who he is. Amen. Amen. And, and so uh, we, we, we know who he is and we know what he has done. Also, we know that God is not one to author confusion. And believe it or not, in this culture, he does not tolerate sin. But even though we say he does not tolerate sin, he made uh, appropriations that we could be forgiven and be washed clean of all sin because he does not want people to perish. He wants us to prosper as our soul prospers. That doesn't mean you'll drive a Rolls Royce, but that does mean that with God on your side, your soul is going to prosper. He wants us to prosper as our souls prosper. He's a forgiving God. Can anybody testify today that he's a forgiving God? Oh, no. Listen. I know some of you, you're sitting back on me today because I know where you've come from because I've met some of your old heathen friends and they have nothing more than to talk about you and to tell on you. And you come into contact with a forgiving God. Can anybody testify he's a forgiving God today? He's a loving God. And when we say loving God, we have a culture that believes that God is all love and he is love, but they don't want to hear that God is also a God of judgment. So he's a God that practices judgment. And as much as sometimes as it may hurt, I'm grateful today that he's jealous over my soul and he's jealous enough that the word tells me that he chastises, that he corrects those whom he loves. I thank God that he does it through people. I'll let you think about that one for a while. There, there, there was, I, I've said this before, but I had my parents in my life, and I, I used to threaten to, to call the scan child abuse hotline on them. And my mother informed me, said, go ahead. It'll be the last call you ever make. I'm glad in that instance that God's not like mama sometimes. He's a forgiving God, but he's a God that chastised. But they corrected me. My grandmother, I've told you this before, I used to say that. I'd, I'd go around, I'd get in trouble and say, oh, Lord. And she'd say, son, you better call on somebody that knows you. And, and, and they corrected me. But I'm thankful that he is jealous enough over my soul that he corrects me. The point is, is that what we know about God from Scripture 
is foundational to our beliefs. And Acts chapter 11 begins with Peter returning from Jerusalem, and he's given an account of that which has happened in Caesarea at Cornelius' house. Acts chapter 10 is repeated in a concise version in Acts chapter 11 in the first few verses because he's given an account and he's testifying to some degree of what has happened at Cornelius' house. And what is going on here is there are some of those Jewish brethren that are not happy about it because it defies some things culturally. It's, this is an issue that is culturally and religiously demanding for the Jewish believer at the time. And Jews did not do, well, Jews did business with and had some interaction with Gentiles, but when it came to being a Jew, culturally and religiously, there was separation. Jews were supposed to remain separate as explained in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 3 through 6. The Hebrew people would not give their children into marriage with Gentiles because it could turn their hearts away from God. And most of what was commanded as separation was because there was a, a safety caveat there that the hearts of the Hebrew people should not be turned to pagan religion. And to some degree, we have to realize that light still has no fellowship with darkness. We shouldn't give our children up into relationships that are going to send them on the wrong road. I can't help it if he's good to me. I can't help it if she's the model wife. But are they saved? Do they believe it? See, I get four hand claps on that because people, when we talk about culturally divisive issues or we talk about, well, I just want them to have a good life and a good family. I had one church member that expressed to their daughter, said, I want you to marry money. The ludicrousness of it is, is unbelievable. We don't give, and, and this was what was set in place. This is why there was a separation between the Hebrews and the Gentiles. Because of the pagan rituals and the pagan lifestyle. And they would not be turned away from God or toward Jehovah, so they would not be given into marriage with people that were pagans. However, however, Exodus chapter 12, 47, 48, and Numbers 15, 14, and I've preached on this previously, mentions that there was provision for the Gentile, the foreigner, to participate in Passover and sacrifices with limited rights. Now stay with me because this is the history. How do we reconcile history with the present? How do we see where there's supposed to be a degree of separation with now where we can come together in the present? Well, I'll tell you, first and foremost, and I'm skipping ahead here for a moment, but it's because of Jesus. And, and, and the point is, is there was always this caveat that God was open to the foreigner because it's not his will that any should perish. And this is the background, the context with which Peter is facing because Peter's obedience to God and because of his willingness to march to what God says rather than what man dictates or what some religious person dictates, the Gentiles heard the gospel and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit such as was poured out at Pentecost. So the fact is that the Jerusalem Jewish Christians were not happy about this occurrence because they see history being changed in the present. Oh, I wish we could get a, just a glimpse of that for a moment. Do you realize that history... What we know from the, from the past is being changed in the present. That right now, there are people sitting under the sound of my voice that you didn't live 
a hundred years ago, but you're alive and well to declare that the Lord is still good today. That history, although it is there, we still see a God that is moving. We still see a God that is never changing. We still see a God that is working in his people now. And we don't understand sometimes, but now there should be no more of this separation. There is no more Jew or Gentile. We're all grafted into one tree. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ has made a way that we might be forgiven. Amen. And the door was kicked open for the Gentiles. And Peter stands in front of the religious crowd. And they're refuting it. And they're like, this is not the way history is supposed to be. But he's standing there telling them, I tell you that they've received the same God that we know with the same Holy Spirit. But let me get into this a little deeper. Like Peter, we stand in the position where we recognize the nature of our Lord and who He is, and the historical account gives us basis for our faith and practice. It does. Yet too many times we live in the past and forget that God is speaking now. Let's talk about the previous occurrence. The previous occurrence. History, and I've, I've talked about history, but history in systematic theology and in fundamental theology and in practical theology, history is one of the building blocks of theology. The way we interpret and live out our faith. Theology is not something we read. Theology is not just something that we talk about. Theology is something that we live and that we do. That is theology. But history cannot be removed from that because, as I've set the groundwork, what we know about God from the past and what we read about God in His Word is what we base our faith and how we interpret what He is doing now. So history is foundational and has its place. Now, before I move along, I pray you love me today. And I pray you let me leave here without any battle scars. Because what I'm about to tell you is this. Is that the tendency is to live in the past history rather than to learn and grow from the past history. People that keep doing the same thing the same way will get the same Really? Is that true? Yes. It, 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 it is. The tendency is to live in the past. Now, we, we've, I, I think we've succumbed to some ideas, and, and, and I think that possibly it's gotten better. But, you know, in the 90s, we went through the worship wars. That when the music changed a little bit, and we started singing courses, and People are like, well, I don't like that because they don't sing the hymns. And I got to have hymns because everybody knows that Jesus sang Blessed Assurance. I'm not being facetious. I, you know, it, it, it's like the man that said, if the King James Bible was good enough for Peter, it's good enough for me. Well, he didn't have the King James Bible. And, and my point is not about the music because I, I, I want I to just... I want you to just delve into this with me for a moment. But sometimes we're so stuck on the past. And, and, and you know what? I don't think, if I may say so, I don't think sometimes that we even realize what's going on in the present because it's not just we're stuck in the past. We don't even live in the present. Because everybody knows Instead of living the moment right now, what I need to do is I need to video the moment. But see, while I'm videoing this side, whatever's going on on that side, I don't have a clue. Because it's not that I'm just stuck in the past. I'm not even in the reality of the present. And... and and I say this, it's not about forgetting our history. It's not about forgetting our foundation. 
It's not about abandoning those things. But it's got to be something deeper that we recognize that we have a tendency to live in the past rather than to learn from the past and to grow from the past because it's only the things that I heard in the past and it's only the things that I learned in my history that now I've grown past that. So history being one of the building blocks of theology and also being foundational and having its place, we have to be cautious because just like then, because Peter is talking with some people and giving his testament to some people that are still stuck in the past. God is opening up the river for whosoever will, let him come. And they're saying, no, that's not the way it was in the beginning. But it was to some degree. Because the oldest book in the Bible that we have tells us of a non-Jewish man as well. His name was Job, and he was from the land of us. Uh, we read, as I told you, that there was always room for the foreigner and the alien in God's kingdom and even in Passover and observing those things, but with limited rights. So what are you saying, Pastor? We have to recognize that sometimes history has its foundation, but if we pay attention closely to history, we see that God was doing some things in our history that even we didn't recognize then, or maybe we misinterpreted it, and when he opens the door wide open, we need to be ready to walk through and not just hang back and say, no, I've got to stay here because that's not what God said. You've got to realize the totality of the picture and everything that God said and everything that God is doing because we cannot bear with the tendency to live in the past. Rather, we've got to learn and to grow from the past, the history. Now, the opening of the door for the Gentiles was prophetic. And here again, it's a matter of remembering all that God had said and what God had done. I realized there was a point and a place of separation. But even when we look closely at God's Word, we will see where God was speaking that there was going to be something more than something that would happen even out of the seed of Israel than just Israel. Opening the door for the Gentiles was prophetic. Go with me to Genesis 22, 18. God told Abraham as a part of the Abrahamic covenant, in your seed, what? All the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. This is interesting. One person obeys and generationally Many people are blessed. No, let me pause there for a moment. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, one person obeys, and down through history, many people are blessed. That great prophet Dave Ramsey says, if you want to change your family's financial tree, it starts with you and trickles down to your children and your grandchildren and those. I say that the great God Jehovah said, if you will obey my voice in you, your house will interpret here, all nations shall be blessed. And notice God is speaking here to Abraham, and he doesn't say it's only going to be for the nation or the conglomerate of Israel. He says that it's going to happen that all nations shall be blessed. What's he talking about? He's talking about the Messiah, that through him would come the seed of the Messiah. And all uh, now understand this. If mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, if you start following Jesus, if you set the trend in your house, if you show the way before you, guess what? All your house can be blessed to know the Lord Jesus Christ and the fullness of his blessing. See, we... We need to get 
we need to get so caught up in trying to leave an inheritance behind should the Lord Jesus tarry his coming. Not an inheritance that moth and rust will corrupt, but an inheritance that is eternal. See, if there's anything I want to give my daughter, I want to give her Jesus. I want to show her the way. I want her to understand that there's a Lord that loves her as much as he loves me, just like he loved her grandmother and her grandfather, just like he loved her great-grandmother and her great-grandfather. We've set this trend. Oh, listen, friend. You say, well, my, my household isn't following in that. Oh, sometimes it takes some time. But go ahead and be obedient to God. Keep praying and keep trusting because I'm telling you, all it takes is one person to be obedient, and it changes the whole family tree. History. Now, so history tells us in Genesis 22, 18, that there's a prophetic utterance here that the door was going to be open for all nations. Huh. And you say, well, pastor, that's good. Well, there's more. Joel 2, 28. Peter reiterated this in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. But in Joel 2, 28 says, and it shall come to pass afterward. That I will pour out of my spirit upon only Hebrews. All flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. I stopped there, but he hits the whole socioeconomic demographic. He also hits every generation. Something happening. So again, we see that the prophetic utterance shows that the door would be open for the Gentiles. The bottom line is this. In the history, God would work through Israel, the Jewish people, to reach the world. But let me bring it down here. But then there's Peter's response. Peter's standing here and there's some there's some religious people that don't quite understand and want things to stay the same way. Now verse 18 does tell us that when they heard these things, they became silent. So some of them just clammed up. But then it says, and then they glorified God saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. So God would work through Israel, the Jewish people, to reach the world. But here's Peter's response. He's, he's speaking. He's given his discourse with these. Where do I fit in from history to the present? How do we reconcile history to the present? Peter's response is this. If therefore... God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I that I could withstand God? Now see, really, that'll preach longer than we've got time. But what Peter is pointing them to here, and I'll get to his statement here momentarily, is it's the same God the same gift and the same faith. But you would be surprised how many people want to fight against the work of God when it doesn't happen their way or in their place or in their time. I've experienced this. I had a, I had a couple in one of my former pastorates that the wife had prayed for his salvation and prayed and that God would just save him and gloriously in a machine shop one day when he was suicidal the spirit of the Lord spoke to him without anybody around and God changed his life radically he didn't know anything about church or where to go to church but he'd been in the Marine Corps with one of our members and he knew him as a Christian so he came to our church well his wife was not of our persuasion. And because 
he decided to go to a church that was not her church, she fought it. And I mean fought it. Things worked out eventually, but now it, it, it never got good or, or even, I'd say, better than what it was. But he's still saved. And I say this, why would we fight when it's the same God, the same gift, and the same faith? And, and I know you, sit there, you say, well, that doesn't happen. Yeah, but say, well, now my grandma didn't do that type of stuff. It didn't happen that way. Ah, they, these kids jumping up and down in the altar. We didn't do that when I was a kid. Everybody has something to say about what they do in church. But everybody's crying if they're strung out on something in the world. I'd rather have them jumping. I'm, I'm telling you. Because some of them I know, some of them I've had in camps. Some of them I've had in camps. And, and I'll be honest with you. I don't identify with everything that they do. Quite frankly, I can't do some of the things that they do, but they serve the same God, have the same gift, and have the same faith. I know that. But we fight that. And Peter's talking to some people that are fighting against it. And they're fighting against it because culturally and religiously, this thing's supposed to be for the Jews. And Peter said, I don't know, man. Look, I'm trying to tell you, how can I withstand the gift of God? Because it's the same God, the same faith, and the same gift. And, and it's just a different collective of people. And then he makes a statement, who was I that I could withstand God? Now, I'm telling you, I pointed it out with Abraham, and there's some people under the sound of my voice that need to hear it. If you want things to change in your life, in your household, all it takes is one person to be obedient, and it changes a generation. And Peter was obedient and because of his obedience, now they weren't the first Gentile converts, the Ethiopian eunuch, remember? He was before that. There were others in Acts chapter 6, but the point is, is here we see somewhat of a massive display, and we see multiple of the Gentiles come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're baptized in the Holy Spirit, and, and you've got people saying, well, how could this be? How could this happen? How could you do this? And Peter says, who was I that I could withstand God? Who was I that I could resist him? Because the bottom line is this. This is not the dictionary definition, but I feel it's something that we need to hear. Because when it comes to self, and when it comes to what we know about history, and what God's wanting to do in the present, obey means to get out of the way. If you're going to obey, get out of God's way. But some people try to tell God how to do it. I mean, you realize, we, we, you know, yeah, there, there's some folks, you can't have a move of God unless you do it on Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm, I'm just telling you, I didn't feel well Wednesday night, but I feel good today. But the point is, is I don't think we should esteem one day higher than the other. Word of God says that. But this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So today, I have the opportunity to be with God's people, to feel God's presence, to know that God is moving right now in His, in His, in His place and in His people. So for me, obey means to get out of the way. Why? If they want to sing, go ahead and sing. When people are worshiping, I don't stop people from coming to the altar. I don't stop people from worshiping the altar. Why? Because obey sometimes means to get out of God's way. I don't know what everybody needs, but I know this. All it takes is one person to obey, and a whole generation can be changed. That's how we're reconciling history with the present. I've got to finish... 
Do not let preconceived notions or ideas hinder the work of God. I've often wondered this. What would happen if we came into a Sunday morning gathering like this and rather than starting with a song, I just start with the message? Now, see, I got people saying, "Mm mm-hmm, come on, yeah. Well, if we do it, because we have preconceived ideas of how it's supposed to happen. I can remember in instances, and, and we've had similar things happen here, but I can remember in instances when I was growing up in, in one church, and this is how we reconcile history with the present, is I remember we used to gather for a, a y'all come type song, and then everybody would dismiss to Sunday school. And I can remember specifically one instance, and I, I was young, and I remember that we gathered for that opening song, and we never made it past the opening song. But don't let preconceived ideas hinder the work of God. The one thing about Pentecostalism is not that we lack order. We need order. But we don't need human order. We want divine order. And there's a difference. Because there was nothing preconceived about the day of Pentecost except they were told, tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power. Everything else was left up to God, and the point is, is they obeyed. That means they got out of the way and let God work. Don't let preconceived ideas hinder the work of God. God uses Peter to illuminate previous prophecies in Joel 2.28 Acts 2.17. So thus, we see the history, the foundation, and the present reconciled in what happens with Peter. And most importantly today, we're standing here because we are a part of this great promise. See, do you realize that Peter's obedience opened the door for us to be here today like we are? Come on, hey man, it's it's all right to praise God, it's all right to worship Him, but I'm happy today that God is not exclusive, but He's inclusive, that He says, whosoever will, let him come, and today, it doesn't matter of my birth, it doesn't matter how much money I have, it doesn't matter what my stature is, it doesn't matter how I look, all that matters is that I know Him, and that I'll come unto Him, because if I come unto Him, He'll draw nigh unto me, is what James said so here's the here's the bigger picture is what we see is we see history is when we base our life on history we need to recognize that God was working in history but God is still moving us forward and progressing us in the present and in the present today it hasn't just stopped with you and I he wants our children he wants our grandchildren he wants our great grandchildren God wants to move he wants to touch he wants to heal he wants to deliver God is still in the saving business he's still the God that's not just a God of history. He's a God of the present. He wants to be reconciled in this day and for his people to know him at this time as he is. Let me close. God wants to reconcile your history in the present. Everything you've believed in the past from his word, everything you've heard in the spirit that aligns with his word, God wants to work in the present. I'm afraid too many times we let the scripture just become facts and figures and words that we quote. But yet it's not life-giving word. God wants to reconcile your history in the present. Where do you fit in the present? Like I asked you last week, what is your relationship with the Holy Spirit? What do we miss sometimes relying only on history and not recognizing the voice of the Lord speaking in the present because we fail to see He's still the same Lord. And it all has to do with Peter's statement. Who am I that I should hinder? How how should, I don't want to hinder what God is doing. 
I want to be in the middle of what God is doing. Lord, draw us close to yourself. The God that you were in the past is the God that you are now. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time together. I thank you for your people that have come together to worship you and to honor you in spirit and in truth. Lord, be glorified. Touch us, Lord Jesus. Direct us, Lord. Help us to recognize our history. But, Father, help us to stand upon it and learn and grow in the present and for the future. Jesus, I love you. I thank you for your time with us that you take the time, that you care for people like us, that you meet with us. Thank you, Lord, for this wide open door of opportunity that we could come to you and know you. Manifest your presence in this house. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Jesus. With heads bowed and eyes closed, just for a moment, if you're here today, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, would you slip your hand up and write back down quickly? God sees and God knows. I know I know it's a Memorial Day holiday, and I know we've got people out, and, and, and you say, well, you, you probably know everybody here. I realize that, but if you're here today and you're not in relationship with Him, would you slip your hand up and write back down? No hands have went up. Everybody here? It's in agreement that they know the Lord Jesus Christ. How many are here today that would say, Pastor, there are things not in my history and my belief system that I base upon Scripture and my walk with Christ, but there are things in my home and in my family and our history that need to change. And there needs to be a catalyst to do so. And if you would just so admit that I need to be that person that obeys, that helps change the generation and change and use of God to direct my house and my family. If that would be you, would you slip your hand up and right back down? God sees hands going up all over the building. Who am I that I should stop the move of God? I'm going to pray for you right now. I want to ask you, Christians, right where you're at, where you're sitting, if you're here, there are people that raise their hands. Would you slip your hand up toward heaven with me right now? Let's just pray. Father, I ask you that you would touch these under the sound of my voice. Lord, these that have come in here today and God there's things that need to be changed in their household there's things that need to be changed in their family there's things in the generations uh, following them that, that Lord they, they need to see a picture they need to see the authenticity of Christianity they need to see who you are not just read about you from history but they need to see you in the lives of these that live today that profess that you are Lord and I pray that you would touch them Lord I pray that you would guide them I pray your divine direction your divine intervention would take place in their home and in their life touch their hearts Lord Jesus I pray God be glorified in them Lord Jesus just move right now in each and every heart each and every life touch Lord Jesus we ask it in Jesus name I pray Amen